The legendary Kettengrad, probably the oddest and cutest of all German World War II vehicles. This half-track motorbike is still quite common at events. As such you will see some footage from Tankfest and Militrex 2019 in this video. Now before we start be warned here, the source situation is bad. So take everything with a grain of salt. Sadly, I don't have access to any primary sources on this vehicle yet. Main problem is that it seems that everyone who wrote about the Kettengrad did not unlock the footnote doctrine before writing. On top of that, most of the sources I use here I usually wouldn't touch at all. But I don't really have an alternative here. So after we got that out of the way, let's look at the name. Now Kettengrad is the short version of Kettenkraftrad, whereas Kraftrad is the old German word for motorcycle. And Kette means chain or track. So well, it's a tracked motorcycle. Unlike M1, it actually says what it does. And also unlike M1, it doesn't apply to like 50 different kinds of equipment from rifles to tanks. But anyway. So what is the origin story of the Kettengrad? Well, some sources started in 1939 with an army project, yet I found one source that notes the following and since that source is quite extensive on various issues like the modifications, this actually might be the correct historical background, but it's not in the other sources. To quote, the historical background to this unique military vehicle seems to be a little cloudy and occasionally contradictory. It would seem that initial development began as a private civilian project. In 1938, the NSU, which is an abbreviation for Neckers Ulm, which was the city the company was located at, motorcycle company began the design of a small tractor with tremendous off-road capability. This vehicle was intended for use in the civilian forestry and agricultural markets. Up until that time, this function had been fulfilled by antiquated methods such as horses, or steam tractors with winches, but some conditions even precluded the use of these methods. Note that no other source confirmed this, yet after the war the Kettengrad was continued in production and used in forestry and agriculture, as such this might not be completely off. Now the source continues that after a while the military ordered 70 vehicles for trial purposes. This is in contrast to another source, which I trust generally more, that states that in 1939 there was a call from the German Army Weapons Agency, the Heereswaffenamt, to create a vehicle that could pull cargo in the mountains, like mortars, heavy machine guns, telephone cables, etc. Whereas another source notes that the NSU company in 1940 got an order to build an off-road towing vehicle that should be able to tow up to half a ton of equipment. Now the first series of 500 vehicles was issued to the troops between 1940 and the end of 1941. And it is rather certain that in June 1941 the vehicle entered official service into the German army, since the source is referring to an official announcement by the army in that month. Basically there were two special variants of the Kettengrad, which had the Sonderkraftfahrzeug Nummer 2 and Sonderkraftfahrzeug 2 slash 1 was for telephone cables and slash 2 was for heavy telephone cables. So we had basically three kinds of this vehicle. Two with Telephone cable rolls mounted in the center and one without, which you usually see at the events. Additionally, there was also a Sonderanhänger 1, literally special trailer 1. Yet it was issued in limited numbers and is rather rare these days. Now let's look at the strength and weaknesses of the Kettengrad next. The Kettengrad was popular with the troops, since it was capable to move under the most dire situations, which was especially useful on the Eastern Front during the modern winter seasons. Its maximum climbing ability is noted at 45 degree. The climbing ability on loose sand is given at 24 degree without any towing load and at 12 degree with a towing load. Additionally, it could move in water as deep at 44 cm, which is about 1.4 feet. Overall, it was well suited for off-road driving and towing. The excellent power to weight ratio and the low ground pressures enabled the Kettengrad to literally go where other vehicles and sometimes men on foot could not go. Furthermore, it was very agile and also fast, something we discuss in more detail in the technical data section. Yet of course it also had its weaknesses. One main issue which was not fixed was the steering gearbox, which was not sealed properly, as such the steering brakes would get oily. 
which could break the steering system, sometimes even months after being sent to the front. One source notes, the designers had to have known this from the very beginning, as they provided both steering brakes with drain tubes for any escaping gear oil. If these overflow pipes would fail, a major overhaul was required. Should oil bypass the oil overflow pipes and contaminate the brakes, it is impossible to gain access to the seals or drums from inside the vehicle. Removal of the engine gearbox and differential is the only way to gain access to effect the necessary repairs. Another issue was that the gear for the reverse was not strong enough and could break easily, which also would break the gearbox. Although the Kettenkrad had strong climbing capabilities and other features, it had a rather high center of gravity. As such, it could be quite dangerous to drive it, since it was a rather narrow vehicle as well. This was especially the case on driving on slopes sideways. Shifting gears is also complicated since the gear shift is located between the legs of the driver. Let's look at some technical data next. The vehicle had an empty weight of 1230 kilograms, which is about 2700 pounds, and a combat weight of 1560 kilograms, which is almost 3500 pounds. It could carry an additional 325 kilograms, including the driver, so about 700 pounds. Whereas the US intelligence report assumed approximately half a ton here. The trailer load is given at about 450 kilograms or an almost 1000 pounds. It had a length of 3 meters or 9.8 feet, a width of 1 meter or 3.3 feet, and a height of 1.2 meters or 3.9 feet. It was equipped with a 1.5 liter engine with 36 horsepower, which was served by two fuel tanks each with 21 liters, which gave it a range of about 250 kilometers, which is about 155 miles on the road. Another source notes a similar value for the road, namely 16 liters of fuel would give a range of about 100 kilometers on the road, whereas off-road 22 liters were needed for 100 kilometers or 62 miles. Surprise, surprise, the transmission was rather complicated and on the lowest gear the cat and crowd crawl ahead very slowly at around 1 to 2 km per hour, but in this fashion it could develop a very strong pull, so ideal for off-road moving. The maximum speed was about 70 km per hour, which is about 43.5 miles per hour. Yet an US intelligence report actually notes a speed of 51 miles per hour here, although with the comment, this speed it is stated is only to be attempted in exceptional circumstances. The regular top speed at 3000 revolutions per minute was noted at about 61.5 km per hour, which is about 38.2 miles per hour. And while each track consisted of 40 track elements, like many other German tracked vehicles, there was also a special snow track variant issued. Yet in this case, they would be added to every other track of the existing tracks. So you had in total 80 track pieces, but you only had 40 snow track pieces that were added. There was also a successor plan, but it was never built in series. There exist some drawings that show it could carry 5 men instead of the usual 3 men. Another source notes that around 10 prototypes were built. It was basically a slightly longer version with more seats and more track wheels. And it seems that this version was actually used in another way as well. Many of you might know the Leichte Ladungsträger Goliath or the Light Charge Carrier, which was basically a tracked mine. This vehicle was not particularly successful and a replacement was built for it, which was called the Mittlere Ladungsträger Springer, the medium charge carrier, well, jumper, which was based on the extended Kettengrad chassis. Yet the vehicle was too heavy and its cross-country mobility was limited. Only about 50 were completed and according to one source, only three reached the front lines at all. For production numbers, I have also only limited information. The Zero series consists of 500 vehicles and was delivered from July 1940 to the end of 1941. We know that for December 1942 about 1200 vehicles were still available. In 1943 around 2450 were produced and this number was almost doubled in 1944 with about 4490. As such, it follows the trend of various other vehicles that the highest production number was achieved in 1944, which becomes even more apparent if you consider that the total war production was about 8,345. So in one year, almost 50% of 
of all cat and crowds were produced. Yet the production did not stop in 1945. It was continued after the war until 1948, since the vehicle was used in a non-military fashion, usually by farmers, foresters and wine growers. Which brings us to the usage during the war. And one author makes a very good summary here. The Kettenkrad was not only used as a towing vehicle for laying field cables and for marshalling purposes at airfields, it has proven itself in difficult terrain as a tractor for anti-tank guns as well as ammunition vehicle and messenger vehicle. The vehicle, much appreciated by the troops, was also used to transport the wounded. Yet there were many more uses, for instance, generals used it during the frontline visits. There exist photos of General Manteuffel, the commander of the 7th Panzer Division, usually called the Ghost Division, yet also very high-ranking generals like General Feldmarschall von Küchler, who was at one point the commander of Heeresgruppe Nord, Army Group North, also used it. And there's one very interesting image because it shows Küchler sitting on the Kettenkrad at the back holding his marshal's baton, which is quite an odd combination to see. To conclude, the Kettengrad was a highly versatile half-track motorcycle with excellent off-road capability. It was used in various aspects, like pulling the Messerschmitt 262 jet fighter, moving wounded in the rear areas, towing anti-tank guns or driving generals around behind the front lines. It was used in a civilian fashion after the war and during the Cold War the Bundeswehr needed a similar vehicle, which in the 1950s led to the Gebirgskarette, literally meaning mountain barrel which is also produced by an NSU company and as the name suggests also originally intended for the use with mountain troops, which would to a certain degree close the circle. Well I hope you liked this little excursion in the realms of the Kettengrad. If you like what I do consider supporting me by sharing this video or by other means. As always sources are linked in the description. Big thank you here to the Panzer Museum Monster for inviting me and also big thank you to the Tank Museum at Bovington for inviting me several times. Thank you for watching and see you next time.